Dr. Orville Barros is an assistant researcher in sustainable ornamental production at the Department of Tropical Plant Sciences, University of Hawaii at Manoa. His research interests include native Hawaiian plant materials development for landscape and ornamental use, screening and selection of non-invasive ornamental species, and development of sustainable ornamental plant production and landscape management practices. His presentation today is entitled 2021 Native Ornamental Plant Research Updates. Dr. Baudos, thank you for joining us today. Okay, thank you. All right, so today I will go, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, updates uh, from the past year about our um, research on native Hawaiian ornamentals. And to start off, um, uh, we, I'm going to announce some uh, germplasm releases for this year. So we have released two selections of native wine plants for this year. Uh, the first one is uh, Jack Montia sandwichensis or Pahuyaka. Uh, so we named uh, one selection from Maui, uh, Puhala Bay. So this was uh, published in May of 2021, so just this year. And it was a joint release between uh, the Maui Nui Botanical Gardens and um, UH. Uh, we also published a, uh, an article in Landscape Hawaii magazine on this uh, germplasm release, the, just this uh, September and October issue. So just a little bit of info on uh, Puhala Bay. So here are pictures of the flowers and the leaves and also um, the plant in a landscape setting and also a plant, the plant in a uh, potted plant setting. Um, so as I've mentioned before, the uh, Puhala Bay is coming from Maui. So via the Maui Nui Botanical Gardens, the flowers of this selection is violet blue and uh, 11.3 millimeters in diameter. Uh, what's unique about Puhala Bay is that the leaves are wavy, uh, unlike most um, Jack Montia species. And uh, it also has a dense pubescence. So that kind of casts a silvery um, look at the plant. Um, the stems are yellow green and also densely pubescent. And since the time of release, I have already distributed uh, a bunch of cuttings and also plants to interested nurseries and also state agencies so if you are interested in getting a uh, cutting of this plant material, uh, just email me. So I'll be uh, putting in my email at the end of this presentation, uh, contact me and then I can send you some um, cuttings. Uh, another release that is um, in time, I guess, for the 2022 year of the Peperomia is uh, Peperomia sandwichensis palikea. Uh, so this was just published uh, this, this month, uh, September of this month, uh, in Hort Science. And uh, Peperomia palikea is a um, selection that's useful for indoor um, desktop plant use. So it, it can handle low light conditions. It's a small plant, can be potted in three inch pots like this one here on top. Um, so uh, this plant material came from Oahu by a lion arboretum specifically. Uh, the upper leaf surface of this plant is dark green with some light green vein venation on the leaves. The lower leaf surface is red purple uh, with light green and pinkish venation. And then the stems are also red purple, um, um, ranging from red purple to great orange. Um, another interesting um, feature of Peperomia palikea is that the inflorescences are uh, curved and about 13 centimeters long. So this adds uh, ornamental value to the plant. So at the time of release, we already have given a few nurseries uh, of cuttings. So cuttings are available at this time. We are currently uh, increasing this one in vitro, in, in tissue culture. So we have successfully put uh, leaf cuttings and also um, stem and leaf cuttings into culture. And um, in the next couple of months, we will be 
uh, subculturing that and making it into micro cuttings and seeing whether we're, we're test we're going to test whether micro cuttings would be the way to go in terms of distribution of the plants. So that's it for the germplasm release updates. Uh, next would be the indoor trial update. And um, this is a continuation of what I presented last year with comparing Peperomia sandwichensis palikea with Peperomia mauiensis. So last year I presented the six year, uh, the six month um, results. And this year is um, the one year uh, results under different light levels. So we tested, we grew these plants under 5,750 and 350 lux. And here are the succeeding pictures are pictures that were taken about a year after they were put indoors uh, under these light conditions. So uh, the first picture you see here is Peperomia palikea under high light conditions. As you can see here, they're pretty uh, good in terms of their growth. Um, the next picture here is Peperomia mauiensis, uh, not looking good after one year. They kind of look leggy, but they're still alive under high light conditions. Uh, and then you have the office light conditions. So this is Peperomia palikea under office light conditions for one year. And as you can see, there is some defoliation going on. And I think that's due to the insects. Uh, we had some insect infestation in, in, in some of these chambers. So um, we had some defoliation going on, but nonetheless, the plants kind of look still okay under one year under office light conditions. Um, Mauiensis under office light conditions are also alive, but um, there are certain parts that have defoliated partly due to that pest incidence. Uh, they're a little bit leggy compared to palikea. And then under low light conditions, you can see that uh, Palikea actually retained the compact shape. Not much growth growing on, not much stretching going on under low light conditions, but most of the plants are still alive under low light conditions. So you can see here uh, that Palikea can really be used as an indoor um, plant. And then you also have uh, Peperomia mauiensis under low light conditions. Um, these are all alive. They're not as leggy as the control or the highlight treatments and also the office light treatments because of the low light levels. So we might try and uh, look for another selection of Mauiensis uh, and see whether, because um, this particular selection uh, gets a little bit leggy under uh, indoor light. Um, I have a couple more selections to test. So we will be testing those selections soon. And then we'll report that in about a year's time. So um, in conjunction with the light experiment, we also did a survey um, of uh, folks who are, who are interested in Peperomia mauiensis. So this survey was done December last year and uh, on in, in, in Maui, uh, particularly the Maui Nui Botanical Gardens. So we developed a survey to uh, get input from the public um, at the start and also after six months having received a Peperomi Maui Ensis plant. So we, uh, what happened was we gave away uh, a Peperomi Maui Ensis for free and um, in return, the, the respondents would uh, answer the survey, uh, the initial survey, and then we'll remind them after six months, uh, just try to see what happened uh, after six months to their plant. So today I will be presenting the uh, results of the initial survey, so just parts of the initial survey. And I would like to thank uh, Hannah Lutgen for I'm administering the survey because during that time, I wasn't able to go to Maui because of COVID, yeah. So uh, the nice thing about this survey is that we got about 43 respondents uh, to this initial survey. And uh, we asked a question about um, recommendations. So if you, would you recommend this 
plan to friends, coworkers, etc. Uh, most of them answered yes, so they would recommend Peppermawiensis for for their friends and coworkers. Um, another question that we asked in the survey is, would you be willing to buy this plant? And a lot of people, majority of the people, uh, are willing to buy this particular native plant because this is a rare uh, plant that hasn't been um, sold commercially. Uh, we also asked them about presentation of the particular selection uh, in terms of like the pot. So we asked, uh, which pot would you prefer? So a three inch ceramic pot like this or a three inch uh, brown plastic pot? And most of them answered uh, they wanted the uh, white ceramic pot because it's already, uh, I guess, dressed up. And when asked, like, how much are you willing to spend for uh, a plant in a white ceramic pot, uh, most people answered uh, $5 as their uh, price uh, that they're willing to pay for that ceramic pot. Uh, when we asked the uh, question on what they're willing to spend in a plastic pot, it's between 3 to $5. Uh, in addition to Peperomia mauiensis, uh, we also ask the respondents whether they are interested in growing other uh, native Hawaiian plants, particularly growing them as potted plants. And most of them are uh, interested in native species that can be grown in pots. So there is a demand for uh, potted native Hawaiian plants. Um, Another question is, would a greater variety of native plants encourage you to buy more native plants? So uh, most people said yes. So if you have a, a variety of natives that are available uh, in the nurseries, then they would buy more of them. And then digging deeper into um, the demands for what particular characteristics do they want in a native plant? And uh, most of them answered uh, native plants that can be used in containers and baskets, and also uh, native plants that can be used in landscaping. Uh, they also, uh, some of them also checked uh, variegated native plants. And uh, the least one was uh, indoor plants, although it's still high, about uh, greater than 70%. So they, they want variegated indoor uh, container hanging baskets and also ones for landscaping. So that was the uh, results of the uh, initial survey, and I'll be reporting back to you next year on the uh, six-month survey on, 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 on Peperomia mauiensis. So now let's go to uh, new Peperomia selections for testing. So we have another selection that is uh, undergoing testing right now. Uh, this particular selection can, comes from Oahu. So this is also Peperomia sandwichensis. But uh, the difference with Palikea is that uh, this one has bigger leaves and also more pronounced venation. Um, and I think in terms of growth, uh, growth rates, uh, this particular selection grows a little bit more fast, faster than uh, Palikea. So this selection uh, has been successfully put in sterile culture uh, on March 2018, and we are increasing these materials for microcutting production. And um, just this past June, July, we conducted acclimatization studies on microcuttings because uh, we were thinking maybe microcuttings might be the way to go in terms of distributing these plant material to the industry. So we did that, and I'll show you some of the results uh, of the acclimatization studies. And uh, one of our next uh, activities for, for this particular selection once we get enough plant material, we will do an indoor light tolerance testing of this one and see whether it kind of um, um, does the same or performs, performs the same as Palikea. So here's a picture of uh, micro cuttings or, or, or uh, shoot culture of uh, this particular selection when it's uh, planted about one month. This is about one month old. Uh, and then this is when they're uh, growing, uh, so they have uh, long long stems like this, and then we harvest these stems uh, to uh, make micro cuttings. So these micro cuttings, uh, we tested 
uh, potting media. So three types of potting media and also the application of Hormex 3 on these micro cuttings because these don't have any roots yet um, and see whether uh, this could be a good uh, planting material to give to the industry. So here is our indoor setup. So we have um, treated and untreated micro cuttings planted in different growing mediums. So we have sunshine number four medium. We also have a one-to-one -one, uh, by volume turfus and coconut coir. And we, we also had a 100% uh, turfus. So turfus is a um, calcine clay. Uh, so it's kind of like broken pieces of pots. So um, it, it's a good material for, for this particular plant because it's a small, um, it's, it's small and uh, heavy. So it does, the pots don't like tip over compared to perlite. So here's the uh, results of this acclimatization study. So we, we grew them uh, under um, LED shop lights for one month and we harvested the cuttings after one month to see, to see what the, the actual rooting is of the micro cuttings. And this is sunshine number four without hormone on the left and sunshine number four uh, with hormone on the right. Uh, basically, the study concluded that sunshine number four plus uh, Hormex 3 actually worked best in terms of, uh, horm uh, of rooting of uh, the micro cuttings. Uh, the second best performing uh, media was surface and coconut coir. So we have uh, surface and coconut coir without application of Hormex 3 on the left, and then uh, surface coconut coir uh, with application of Hormex 3 on the right. So you can see there is a, uh, again, a stimulation in rooting with application of Hormex 3 compared to no application at all. And then our least performing uh, media was turfus. Uh, turfus had high mortality and also poor rooting. This is partially because uh, turfus uh, drains uh, pretty quickly. It's a fast, it's a well-drained medium and it also doesn't hold as much moisture as sunshine number four. So if you would like to establish or root these micro cuttings in turfus, then you have to uh, irrigate the um, surface um, probably like twice or three times a week. Uh, that compared to um, sunshine mix, we only watered once, uh, once a week, basically. So that's it for the um, micro cutting study. And the next couple of slides are just some exploratory projects that we're looking at for um, other underutilized native species. So the first species that we looked at um, is uh, Maoli Oli or Shidea globosa. So Shidea globosa, this particular selection uh, comes from Maui via the Maui Nui Botanical Gardens. Um, I haven't seen this particular native plant uh, being sold um, commonly in the nursery industry or even some of the, uh, the native nurseries. I haven't seen them being sold that much. So I think this might be uh, a, a native species that has container plant potential because I've seen it grown at the Maui Nui, Maui Nui Botanical Gardens in a large uh, pot actually. So I can see that it can be used as a container plant and uh, Maui Nui also mentioned that um, the flowers are used for lay. Um, so I was interested in looking at um, the cut flower potential of this particular plant or yeah, species. Um, another interesting characteristic of Shidea is that uh, the flower smells like uh, melted butter. <laughs> yeah. Um, this Species is found throughout all of the islands. In Oahu, I think it is an extinct species. Um, it grows on the coast, so it's a salt, wind, and drought tolerant plant. So in terms of exploratory studies, we looked at 
uh, propagation experiments looking at tip cuttings and also a pinching experiment, so unreplicated pinching experiment um, when used as a hanging basket plant. So these next few photos is just showing you uh, some experiments that we did with um, Hormex 3 with the different uh, types of cuttings, tip cuttings, whether it's a softwood cutting, a semi-hardwood or a hardwood cutting. Uh, this is because we didn't see or we haven't seen much proto propagation protocols for this particular species. So we tried testing uh, application of hormone. And um, results after one month uh, show that uh, softwood cuttings can be a good planting material for this one. And uh, adding Hormex 3 uh, basically improved um, rooting of these cuttings. Uh, Semi-woody cuttings are also uh, ideal. They, they can also root. Uh, with semi-woody cuttings, with hormone application, and also mature stems with hormone application. So regardless of whether it's softwood or hardwood, uh, you can propagate the species from tip cuttings. So we will be doing more replicated studies of this one in, in the future uh, once we get enough planting material. Uh, we also did preliminary research on hanging baskets, uh, looking at uh, the plants that we generated. So we tested a no, we, we had the no pinch treatment with about three plants per hanging basket. This is an eight inch hanging basket plot, uh, pot. And then on the right is uh, uh, a pot that we will be pinching. So this is a picture of the pot before pinching uh, once. So about two weeks, you can see that uh, the no pinch treatments are a little bit leggy, whereas the pinch treatments uh, are producing more uh, compact growth after two weeks. Uh, after about two and a half months, the no pinch treatment started to flower and then uh, the 1x uh, pinch had um, more growth, but it's also starting to induce its flowering. And then about three months after potting, then you have full flowering of the pinch treatment. And then the no pinch treatment shows that um, um, it's very leggy, so it doesn't cover the whole pot. So um, we will be doing more replicated studies of this one uh, in the future. Uh, we also did preliminary research on uh, the potential of the flowers as a cut uh, cut flower filler. So this is what uh, it looked like uh, at harvesting and uh, this is what it looked like after one week in tap water. So uh, we haven't tested uh, the maturity. So I think based on these uh, results here, uh, maturity, like when you harvest the, the plant material depends. Um, the, so the, the, well, the shelf life De depends on the maturity of the, uh, when you harvested it. So we will be looking into that in, 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 the, in the future. Uh, another um, plant that we are interested in looking at is uh, a variegated form of naupaka. Uh, so this variegated form we obtained from Kauai Nursery and Landscape. Um, I believe this has potential as a container plant and also as a landscape plant, although I've heard from uh, Kauai Nursery that it's a little bit more slower growing than the typical naupaka. Um, so we did propagation experiments on this particular selection, uh, looking at two node cuttings because we want to maximize the amount of cuttings that we could get per unit stem. So we were curious whether two note cuttings might work. So the results of uh, this uh, preliminary study showed that uh, two node cuttings can root uh, with Hormex 8 application. Um, so we potted up these two node cuttings. And after about 46 days, we got 80% survival. And then after two months, we only got 20% survival. So what uh, a problem that we saw with these two node cuttings is that not all of the two node cuttings developed uh, 
buds that would form a new plant. So I will be doing uh, replicated trials of this particular study, maybe comparing it with something that's a little bit longer, maybe like three node cuttings uh, this fall, um, fall of this year. And then another interesting selection of uh, Naupaka, we saw um, this came from, so this was a sport of the Kauai variegated plant. Uh, so this particular selection also has uh, potential use as a landscape and container plant. Uh, we are currently propagating uh, this particular um, sport uh, and checking whether uh, the variegations are stable. Um, so far, the, we've generated some plants, and um, it's being uh, it's uh, the the variegation being produced is pretty much stable with some uh, branching with some branching that are not variegated. So this is the variegated form, and this is the regular form of the naupaka. And then, uh, aside from naupaka, we are also looking at Oahu sedge or Carex wawensis. So this trial is ongoing. So we received um, seeds of uh, Carex wawensis from Hawaii Island by a lion arboretum. And uh, we see it as this particular selection has uh, landscape potential because this one has more compact um, form has a more compact form than the ones that, than the ones that are currently sold in the nurseries. Uh, another interesting characteristic of this selection of Carex wahuensis is that it has matte leaves, so it's not as shiny as the 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 ones that are sold in in, in nurseries. So in July we did a uh, landscape trial planting of these, so comparing the regular naupaka with the more compact one. So this was in July. And then on the right is a picture that was taken uh, just this month. And as you can see, the, the regular Carex wahuensis, they're kind of big and billowy, whereas the Hawaii uh, selection is a little bit more compact and more upright in, in growth form. So um, we will be ending this trial uh, sometime in December or January, and then we will be reporting um, back to you what, what, the, what our findings are with this particular selection. Um, another study that ongoing study that we're uh, doing right now is uh, the um, studies on dormancy of Carex wahuensis. So Carex is a sought after and common uh, native plant for landscaping, but one of the uh, gaps in terms of production is seed dormancy, so they have a dormancy period. So if you sow the seeds, they won't germinate until like months after. So uh, what we're looking at right now is looking at treatments to enhance seed germination. And so far we have identified one factor that might be um, um, useful in terms of hastening seed germination of Carex wahuensis. So we will be, uh, by next year we will be uh, reporting on this in more detail. So uh, I'd like to thank uh, my grad students and student assistants who've helped me through the years with our research program, uh, also the Magoon Research Station who uh, is housing our plants, um, extension agents Russell Galanti and Hannah Lutkin uh, for helping us in uh, distributing these plants and also uh, uh, collaborating with uh, research. Uh, also our collaborators from Lion Arboreto, Maui Nui Botanical Gardens, and also Maui Native Nursery. So this project uh, or this program was funded through the Hawaii Department of Agriculture New Germplasm Grant, uh, Hawaii County Office uh, Grants, uh, also Maui County Office Grants, um, also some HEFNA funding and also the USDA uh, hatch project. So if you have any questions, let me know. You can drop me an email if you're interested in getting some of these selections. So my email is obaldos at hawaii.edu. And you can follow us on our uh, website that's listed here on or on our uh, Instagram handle. 
So with that, I would like to thank you. And if you have any questions, let me know. Thank you, Dr. Baldos. Um, we do have a couple of questions here. How do you determine which plants to investigate for potential as a, perhaps like a hanging basket or a container plant and so on? Um, so um, how do I uh, select which plants would go to what sort of uh, uses? So mm -hmm. um, basically, the form of the plant. So in the case of uh, Jack Montia or Pauihiaka, it has a viney form and it has been used as a ground cover. So I kind of thought with that growth form, it might work as a container plant. So mm -hmm. that's how we chose um, testing of Jack Montia as a container plant. And then for the Shidia, which is going to be um, tested in the future, uh, I saw, I saw a planting of that in a big pot at Maui Nui Botanical Garden. So uh, that gave me an idea that, oh, this might be useful as a container plant. So based on based on form and based on what's out there, um, that's how I determine its use. Can, um, thank you. Can someone contact you if they think they have a, uh, a native Hawaiian plant with potential? Yes, that's that's uh, that's good. Also, so um, if if somebody has a species that uh, might have potential use and uh, doesn't have the the means to do research, then uh, feel free to contact me, and then we can kind of talk and see what what sort of research we can do. Okay. Well, thank you, and you know we'd like to encourage um, our our pop. Uh, the residents to use uh, native Hawaiian plants to reduce the opportunity for new invasive species from being accidentally introduced here uh, because, you know, we've had so many that affects our livelihood and also affects our agricultural producers. So thank you very yes. much for your work on that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh,